Hello everyone, my name is Jan Williams. I'm a PhD student here in the Department of Mechanical Engineering at the University of Washington. And today I'm going to be talking with you about sensing with shallow recurrent decoder networks. Uh, in the previous lecture, Nathan talked a little bit about uh, the overall framing of SHRED as an architecture or shallow recurrent decoders as an architecture. And today we're going to focus more specifically on how that architecture can be used for sensing problems. So the relevant work today is uh, these two papers, Sensing with Shallow Recurrent Decoder Networks, and this follow-up about leveraging arbitrary mobile sensors. Uh, both of the GitHub links are supplied here and should also be in the video description. And with that, let's dive into it. So to start, I want to frame what I'll call a static sparse sensing problem. And what I mean by a static sparse sensing problem is a problem where we have some high dimensional state, x an element of Rn, uh, as a sort of guiding example for these first few slides, we can think about uh, sea surface temperature. And we also have some set of measurements, y an element of Rm, where m is much, much less than n. And we're interested in performing a reconstruction from these uh, sparse sensor measurements in the field uh, to reconstruct this whole field. So mathematically, we're looking for some map f that goes from the set of our sensor measurements to the high dimensional state, or at least some approximation of the high dimensional state. I call this a static sensing problem because the form given here relies only on sensor measurements at time t to reconstruct the global field at time t. Uh, later on, that will be relaxed, and that's much of the motivation behind TRED. Um, but this is one of the common ways that people think about uh, data-driven reconstructions of high dimensional fields. So more specifically, we can think about a linear data-driven reconstruction of such a high dimensional field. And in this example, we'll assume access to some set of training data from which we construct a training data matrix. We'll call it X, where each column of the matrix represents the uh, state, the high dimensional field, so like sea surface temperature at time T and we perform the singular value decomposition of that training data matrix. Now, the singular value decomposition, or POD, is a worker workhorse in machine learning, and there are other lectures on this channel that will talk more in depth about it. But today, we'll use it primarily to get what are called POD modes, or this psi sub R matrix right here. We'll come back to that in a moment. But first, we'll talk about uh, the types of measurements that are allowed in this linear data-driven reconstruction. Unsurprisingly, given how many times I've said the word linear, we expect a linear measurement of the system. And so that amounts to this measurement matrix C. Moreover, we'd like this C to consist of rows of the identity matrix. What that means sort of pictorially is that it picks out individual sensor locations. So it's not some combination, some linear combination of uh, temperatures in the sea surface temperature example across different places. It is the temperature at one point. Um, and given this formulation of a sensing matrix C and this training data and critically the POD modes psi sub R, uh, we can generate a reconstruction very simply from this expression here where we multiply the POD modes by the inverse of C size, C size of R um, and the sensor measurements Y. The flavor of what is going on here is that we can determine from R sensor measurements uh, estimates of the, PO, the coefficients associated with the first R POD modes. And in order for this to be done well, the conditioning of the inverse C psi sub R needs to be, well, needs to be at least manageable. And as a result, oftentimes when we're doing a linear data-driven reconstruction, it's critical that we have a uh, principled sensor placement scheme. That is limiting in the sense that sometimes we won't have control over where we can actually place sensor measurements. And as a result, nonlinear data-driven reconstructions have become, po become popular recently to allow for increased flexibility in uh, sensor location. And also because fundamentally, a nonlinear reconstruction is more capable of uh, reconstructing a field that's governed by some nonlinear POD. PDE, I mean. So we'll look at one of those methods now, which will be called a shallow decoder network. 
So this problem setup is very similar. We have some set of training data and we also have some set of sensor measurements. And now as opposed to thinking about a uh, linear operator to map from sensor measurements to the high dimensional state, we simply train a feed forward neural network or a shallow decoder network to go from Y, the sensor measurements, to the high dimensional state X. Uh, as I mentioned, this gives you greater flexibility in the types of systems that you can consider. You can look at more strongly nonlinear systems and also have a bit better chance of good performance in situations where you don't have uh, the ability to place sensors, particularly where you want them. But this is also what I would call static. And that's a fundamental limitation in the reconstruction of dynamical systems. A lot of these methods have been applied to uh, both instances like sea surface temperature as well as data sets like eigenfaces. And while in the eigenfaces example, um, there is no temporal history of sensor measurements to leverage, when we're looking at a dynamical system, you lose so much information when you don't consider the fact that the system is evolving dynamically and account for that in your model. Uh, say in control theory, if that's your background, uh, a control engineer would never say, I'm going to measure the system at time t and go with that. They would devise some sort of Kalman filter and uh, obtain a more nuanced estimate of the full state from the limited measurements that we, they have. So that was the idea behind Shred. We want to devise a neural network architecture that allows for the incorporation of not just Y sub T when constructing X sub, reconstructing X sub T, but also a history of sensor measurements. And a very, very natural way to do this is through the use of a recurrent network. So in the shallow decoder network, we would say take the last sensor measurement, so at time T equals zero here, we take the last sensor measurements and feed that directly into the shallow decoder network. Now what we do with SHRED is we take this entire these entire trajectories of sensor measurements, run them through in LSTM, and then output the last hidden state of that LSTM into the shallow decoder network. And essentially what this allows us to do is to incorporate all of this temporal information uh, without augmenting the sort of dimension of the shallow decoder network. We're not just stacking up uh, time delayed versions of our sensor measurements, we're running them through this recurrent network that is sort of naturally designed to handle this type of data. And generally, we find that this provides significant increases in performance. Before we look at some specific examples of that, I want to check. Uh, just a little bit longer about how simple of a model this is. So this is the instantiation of, uh, of a shred model in PyTorch. It's a minimal implementation, but just the initialization here and the forward function here is enough to get a shred model that works in a lot of the cases that we've considered. Um, and that is in some ways a remarkable result uh, in that something as simple as the recurrent architecture achieves as good of performance as we'll sort of look at now. So one of the uh, example data sets that we've looked at is atmospheric ozone concentration. So this data set consists of about 2,600 samples of atmospheric ozone concentration at different latitude, uh, longitude, and elevation. And here we have the reconstruction of shred and a linear method, QRPOD, um, which is the same as the linear method I talked about earlier. And we see that visually, shred greatly outperforms uh, the linear reconstruction. And over on the uh, this side of the board, uh, we also see that this holds in, in the case of increasing noise, as well as uh, shows that shred requires far fewer sensors to achieve excellent reconstructions than the competing methods of the shallow decoder network and uh, the linear reconstruction. Very similar results in the sea surface temperature data set that we've looked at. Uh, again, you can just see from the reconstructions that SHRED is able to capture fine grained details of the flow that the QRPOD or linear reconstruction method is, is incapable of and does so with 
essentially one to three sensors where uh, QRPOD and other shallow decoder networks require far more sensors to achieve even comparable performance. So, so far what we've talked about is shred with what I'll call immobile sensors, uh, where in some sense this measurement operator C is fixed throughout time. The nice, one of the nice properties of shred is that it also allows for a time varying measurement. Now, there are usually restrictions on what types of uh, time variance you can allow for. Um, often that means that C of T has to be periodic, but the flexibility is still nice in an example where we might want to estimate sea surface temperature from, say, global shipping lanes that are often uh, run back and forth rather than just buoys that are, say, out in, the, uh, out in the ocean. As an example of this mobile shred, we have a uh, example here where we've trained a model to reconstruct the propagation of a detonation wave. Uh, in the bottom image right here, we have the trajectory of the sensor as it flows, as it runs through this detonation wave. Uh, and on the top, we have the evolution of the reconstruction with the ground truth also given on the bottom. And we find that Shred does an excellent job of uh, reconstructing the final and uh, previous uh, detona detonation wave snapshots. Uh, the training data in this case was different initializations of the force, uh, the initial force causing the de detonation wave. Um, and the evaluation shown here was on a uh, ex was on a parameter of that initial detonation that it had not been seen during training data. So this also gets, starts to get towards training shred models across parametrically varying uh, data sets. Uh, as the sort of last example that we'll look at. Um, the fact that SHRED can be used in mobile applications also allows for its application to biomechanical data expansion. In this project, we looked at uh, mapping ankle measurements, so ankle uh, uh, angle measurements to, uh, of a person in walking on a treadmill to other joint angles and biomechanical measures throughout their body. And we did this in two ways. We looked at individual models, so built an individual a model for each individual, evaluated it on later mm -hmm. uh, data from their walking gait. And we also, excitingly, looked at a population model where we trained the model on 11 of the subjects and subsequently applied it to a withheld subject. In pretty much all cases, Shred outperformed uh, both a shallow decoder network and a linear reconstruction, in some cases by up to an order of magnitude. And this is an exciting result for a variety of reasons, partly, again, because we're starting to get towards uh, uh, the a demonstration of Shred's ability to work with parametric variation. So I'll wrap it up there, but there will be subsequent lectures in this series where we talk about different temporal models, so replacing the LSTM with a different type of recurrent model or a transform or something else altogether, and also how when we do so we can think about regularizing the evolution of the latent state so that uh, the latent state evolves in some interpretable way, perhaps. We'll also talk more about the parametric variations that I keep alluding to, as well as compressive training, applications in nuclear and control systems, and David Yee will chat about the software package he's been developing. So thank you very much, and look forward to seeing you in future lectures.